Hello, hungry people, and welcome to the Science of Barbecue and Grilling with Meathead, presented by Kingsford. Hi there, I'm Jenny Johnson. And I'm Meathead. And you know how you're always trying to duplicate the Chicago Steakhouse steak? Well, now you can. We have the technique, all the information's online at amazingribs.com slash video. Now what's most important is the quality of the meats. Yeah, let's talk about the different cuts of meat first, because the different muscles on the animal taste different, have different texture and cost different. Let's start with filet mignon. A lot of people think that's the best cut of meat on the animal. It's the most tender cut of meat on the animal. And it tends to be very thick, so it causes a little bit of a cooking problem because it's so thick. The next one is the ribeye steak, and a lot of people love this. A lot of steak aficionados think that's the best piece of meat because it's got a lot of intramuscular marbling in here, which the, which the um, filet mignon does not have. And this is the flank steak. And the flank steak is very lean, and it tends to be very tough if you don't cook it properly and if you don't slice it properly. It's got very distinct striations in it. And it's less expensive than the ribeye and the filet mignon. So here I'm gonna dump in some of the regular blue bag Kingsford charcoal. And then I'm gonna take some crumpled up newspapers, put it under the chimney, light them, And in about 10 or 15 minutes, they, these will be all white and ready to go. All right, so for a video about different types of charcoal, the best ways to start your fire and how to use wood for flavor, just go to amazingribs.com slash videos. So, Meathead, what's the difference between cooking a thin steak and a thick one? Thin steaks, you gotta cook hot and fast so you get a nice dark crust, but you don't overcook the center. Thick steaks, you need to cook at a lower temperature, slower, so that you can cook the center and the exterior and get a nice crust out All right, we're starting with thin right here, and we're gonna put the oil directly on the meat instead of on the grill, why? If, if you put it on the grill, it burns, it turns to carbon, and it also cracks the oil and goes, um, gets smelly. So this way, it's on the cool meat, it'll provide non-stick capability right off the bat. We call this the afterburner method because it looks like the back end of an afterburner of an F-16. That is hot. And I am the human rotisserie. And you can see we're getting some grill marks, but we don't want grill marks. We want an even dark brown all throughout. So flip off and... God, that looks so good. Okay, we're gonna check the thermometer. All right. You can see that. Are That's 130, 133. We're done. Yeah, we are. That okay, is a medium so rare steak. There is our thin cut. Now let's take a look at how to cook a thicker one. Okay, we're gonna get rid of the afterburner. Now today we're using our friend the slow and sear, which is a basket that holds the charcoal off on one side so we can do indirect cooking on the Weber kettle very easily. Okay, so we're gonna have a hot side and an indirect side, direct radiant heat, indirect convection heat. Okay, now we have two identical ribeye steaks, and we're gonna put one on the hot side, like a lot of people do, grill it hot, sear it off, and then we're gonna put the other on the indirect side and cook it slower and see if there's a difference in the final product. A little experiment, Meathead. So now we're gonna put the lid on. And this will take a few minutes, and we'll see where we are. Sounds good. Now, cooked indirect, and we're gonna get our sear over the hot coals. We're done. All right, so this is the ribeye that was on the direct heat. Let's take a look. Right. Okay, and as you can see, 
We have a little pink in the center and it's a little tan along the edges and the surface has not got a real good crust. Now this is... Okay, so this was the radiant heat. This was cooked over indirect heat at first and then we finished it on the hot side. You see we got a really good nice sear and... Okay, well. Wow. Well, yeah, this one is a little less cooked than this one because it went slowly and I had a little more time to control it. It's easier to catch something that's moving slowly. So I cooked this one right on the money and look at you have only this very small, thin, can you see that? That thin line cooked of well so done. Much more evenly. And it took twice as long to cook, but I'm telling you that's going to be tender and juicy and spectacular. And look at how nice dark crust we got on it. And this one, it moved really fast and it kind of got away from me. I overcooked it a little bit. And you're gonna lose all that flavor if you do it too fast. Yeah, and also you've got a little overcooked on the exterior. What about the flank? Okay, the flank steak, which we cooked really fast, we got cooked to nice medium. And <laughs> so the flank steak with hot and fast, we got cooked to nice medium and a beautiful dark crust. Mm. Should we sit down and dine? Let's eat. All right, let's eat. Oh man, nothing like a steak dinner. And you know, cooking for others is an act of love. And the most important part of the meal is not what's on the plate, but who's in the chairs. Cheers. Here's to you.